Okay, ladies, I have got a treat for you this podcast. Now, you may know her or you may not know her, but you will know her after this podcast is finished. Her name is Florence Bavanandan. I hope I've said that right. Um, and so Florence is a trained classical opera singer. And before turning her attention to education and developing young artists in the pop industry, it was there that she realized that although she was a very confident person with no problem speaking out, she was struggling to actually get her voice heard. She was being shh, silenced by colleagues and also self-censoring at the same time. So what does a girl do? You guessed it. She went back to operatic training and used the skills of holding space on stage and communicating with large groups of people to help her hold space in business, which is something we all want to do and learn how to do more effective daily. What happened? It worked, of course, and she started to do the same for other women too. Ladies, I bring to you Florence Bavanandan. Welcome, Florence. Hi, Leanne. Thank you. It's so great to see you. And how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. It's, um, I'm enjoying the sunshine. I wasn't a fan. It was like we had a couple of days of grey weather and I'm yeah. just, yeah. I'm all about being outside, sunshine. I'm love not it. about grey and rain. Yeah, definitely not. I love the sunshine. It does something different to me. I don't know what, yeah. but it does something great. <laughs> exactly. Welcome. Welcome so much to Leanne's Voice Podcast. It's such an honor to have you on today. I'm really excited to hear the stuff that you're going to share and learn because I personally, as we were saying just before we recorded, I've never actually met or recorded with a classically trained opera singer. And the ones that came to mind are obviously the big ones like Pavarotti and is it Andrea Bocelli, etc. And and but I've never actually kind of met someone who's done that, gone the whole way through. So I really want to hear how that transfers into speaking skills and how it transfers into business. Because I, what I love about business is that anybody can get in there and bring a huge wealth of skills into. It. And I really want to hear how yours is working and how you're training up other people too. So. I'm going to go through like a couple of questions I was thinking of. Like um, the first one I was thinking of, I wanted to ask you is basically what advice can you provide between, this is what I really wanted to know, between the relation of holding space as a classically trained opera singer uh, to speaking out about issues, say for example, in the corporate workspace or something. Yeah. So I think that's such an interesting question. When I saw this question. I was like, Ooh, yeah, we really want to get into this. Yeah. Um, so I think singing and musical training, especially, because it's, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily just about singing, like that has definitely added some skills, but it's also just musical training. And I think yeah. the emphasis that it puts on practice versus performance. Mm. So really thinking of like, in, as a musician, I would never go and do something in public without having practiced it a lot first. Yeah. And I think in work, we kind of have this expectation that like, oh, you've got to do a presentation, off you go. Or you've got a massive meeting, off you go. You've got to have a really big conversation about potentially getting a pay rise, oh, just go and do it. Yeah. You know, we don't put the same amount of preparation into it. Mm -hmm. And that's, there's two sides of that preparation. And the first is literally, what are you going to say, the content? Mm -hmm. And the second is your mental preparation of mm -hmm. how you're going to be in that moment. Mm -hmm. Because we can practice how we perform under pressure. Yeah, so I think that kind of practice versus performance has been one of the key things for me. And, you know, I noticed it with you as well, that you're like, you're so well prepared. And, Thank you. And it really shows. And, and it means that then if you have all that preparation done, you can then go and give that performance. Mm -hmm. you know? And you be so much better for it. And I think we all know that feeling of like an hour after an argument or a big conversation, you're like, God, I wish I'd said that. Or why didn't I say that? And so much yeah. of what I do is about getting people to be that person in the Yeah. Moment. Yeah. So it's that practice versus performance. And then in terms of actual singing, mm. so and in opera, so I've used a lot of character exercises mm. to normally, right? So we would think about, okay, so I'm going to be Despina. Who is Despina? She's a maid and she's in the marriage of Figaro. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in an opera, that, that opera could be being performed as it's like period drama within like the 1800s and she's a maid within a house. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that it's in present day and she's a waitress in a restaurant. Yeah? Yeah. And so that person is going to be very different. Definitely. So the spina in the 1800s probably isn't going to have a smartphone and be distracted. 
loves. He's going to be like texting her, but he'll be like trying to creep up. Yeah. And so that those two people are very different. So we would use we would do character building exercises around that. So like, who is she? And really boil it down to something that you can be and just inhabit rather than think about, okay, I am Florence and I'm going to then have this mm-hmm. feeling somewhere in the middle and I'm going to try and be her. But it's like, yeah. no, I'm just going to think about being Despina and just be her. And to do that, we use an exercise about thinking about, okay, what would she wear? How does she feel? What If she was a colour, what would she be? How does she think? And really try and inhabit that space and retrain train the brain to think about okay I'm going to be this person and so taking that into work I use it a lot to to think okay who is when you're the you're most confident and you're bossing life mm-hmm. what, what do you look like and who are you as a person so then getting into that character and that character is just you at 100 percent yeah I like that definitely the preparation not just like the practical stuff but yeah. the mental part as well I really really love that and practice versus the performance because it is like what you say it's like you've got a presentation to year end stats all oh, right i'm gonna go, just go and do it and rather than thinking like how is this gonna look like what am i gonna actually say what am i trying to get across what do i want them to leave the meeting with and stuff like that and i like this the part you said be that person the moment rather than having that angry feeling after i was like oh, i should have said this i should have definitely can definitely relate to that and character building never really thought of it like that in regards to what I'm going to go and say and just to really build myself in and retraining the brain. My goodness me, that's really, really key. I really love that. Definitely. That's really, really helpful. And I hope that our listeners have really taken some bits from that. So when they've got this next kind of pay rise question or appraisal meeting, this is definitely some good tips there. Definitely. And that, that kind of leads me on to think, okay, like, so that was really great advice about preparing yourself practically in the performance wise and it makes me think as well about another question about like what advice would you give for a corporate room, a woman to take her yearly appraisal on how to clearly express herself on the value that she adds to the company and why she needs that raise not just saying I want to move from 70 to 80 grand but to say like why she's worth the extra 10k difference how would you kind of advise someone who kind of came to you with that query yeah. Yeah, it, it's such a hard one as well. And it's, it's a question I get asked. I think it's probably the most popular question because it's, it, especially for women, yeah. it's so, it's, it's such like a um, flammable subject. Yeah. Because, you know, I have female friends and colleagues who have actually been told that they're being too emotional mm. um, in those meetings. It's like when you're treated like that and all your negative thoughts about the, the worst possible outcome actually come true yes. and your boss is like, you don't deserve this and you're being too emotional. Mm. It's so hard. And yeah. then also that feeling of like, am I worthy? You yeah. know, and I think as women, we're told like, stay in your place. You oh. should do, like, we're, we're, there's so much messaging from society about how we should be and how we should act. Yeah. Like, what we should wear, how our body should look, mm-hmm. like being too mouthy, spe- like nagging of what we say. So there's so much, there's so much noise already in our heads that when yeah. we go have a meeting like this, which could possibly, we worry, make us look bad, that yeah. oh, we kind of, there's just so much going on there. Yeah. So we avoid it or it doesn't go well, or we don't ask what we want to ask. So I would start with, if you're fortunate enough to be in a job where you can count your contribution to your job in figures, mm-hmm. then I think that is a great place to start. Mm-hmm. So for example, I have a friend who works for a big arts organization and she was just like recently chatting to me. She was like, oh yeah, yeah I, I saved them 50K last week. I wow. Like, yeah, I was like, what, what? She was like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. She she moved some stuff around with um, performance venues, and um, yeah, she saved them fifty thousand pounds. That's huge, huge, isn't it? So, oh my gosh! If if you're fortunate enough, and and I think we might think that in our jobs, the only way you can really count that is if you're something like you're in sales or you're in recruitment, Mm. very numbers orientated. But actually, even if you're in an operations capacity, Mm -hmm. marketing or you're doing something you can that is you know everyone's contribution to the business Mm -hmm. and you can say look this is what I've done and it has resulted in x more revenue for you Mm -hmm. give me some sugar basically yeah (laughs) (laughs) so so I think but you know so if you can start there that's a great place to start Mm -hmm. if you can't start there 
then I would keep a log of what you've done and I would say literally keep this all the time from when you have every appraisal so normally people would have an appraisal every six months to a year so yeah. keep your log of from taking that time from the first date of the appraisal to the to your next appraisal of what you've done how you've improved any training you've done value mm-hmm. that you've added and just keep a note of it it's mm-hmm. great to keep keep a note anyway just for yeah personal development but really think about okay this this is what I've done and I think often work goes by so quickly yes actually don't get a chance to think about it and our boss definitely is not thinking about it because Mm -hmm. they're they're also having their own life and their own work yeah so making sure that you have that there so that when you're thinking about right okay I've got to go into this meeting oh my god what am I going to say what am I going to say or what are they going to think you're like well I'll just go back to my log of all the things I've achieved in the last year yeah that's the basis and that will give you a huge amount of authority in yourself of knowing you know what actually I've done some pretty good stuff Mm -hmm. and if you get to six months and you haven't done enough it gives you the time to think right I need to just up my game a little bit for the next six months before my review definitely so, so being prepared in that way mm-hmm. and then when you're actually in the room well actually before the room I would build relationships yes okay so I'm all about building relationships I think it makes life a lot easier mm-hmm. um so you know if your boss if you don't have a great relationship with them or if you know something's coming up you know put that time in put that effort in ask them how like if they're married how's their spouse if they have children do they have children oh are they going away this summer are you going anywhere for Christmas did you have a nice Christmas all these things help you build your relationships yeah. and make someone that people are more likely to just be warm towards um, definitely and then also about like if people are going to give you more work projects which might help you mm-hmm. with those things that will help you get the pay rise etc cetera, etc cetera. so building those relationships and then finally always comes back to preparation before performance so yeah thinking about having that conversation, role-playing it with someone. My poor husband has listened to all my webinars multiple <laughs> times. My sisters as well, like they have personal performances. But yeah. just find someone who, who you can just speak to. And if you don't have someone, video mm. yourself. Yeah. And, yeah it's going to be so cringe. It will mm-hmm. be so embarrassing. But it will be completely worth it. Because putting yourself under that pressure outside of the performance will help Mm -hmm. you when you're actually in it. Definitely. Definitely. I love that. That's really, really helpful. Some key things, because I always found it such a bit of a stress or a struggle when it was appraisal time in my previous job. I'm like, I know they're going to think like, oh, you've got your salary. That's enough. You get the usual yearly increment. Um, But I really love that you said, um, I like it about logging your work because I was so, I remember going, when I was by my place, my solicitor at the time, she logs everything, the phone calls, the letters, everything. And I was like, I'm going to start doing that. And I told one of my other friends as well, who's having a bit of an issue at work, said, log what you're doing. And I like that because that's what you can use as your evidence of, this is the work that I'm doing. This is the value that I add. You may not know or see it, but this is the evidence of it. And I love that you said it shows like, shows the extra income or the extra revenue that you saved or brought into the company by doing all the small things that make a big difference and that log goes a long way because day to day sometimes you can't remember what you did yesterday let alone two months ago and how the change you had so I love that the thing that I love which I did try little bits and pieces and I got fed up in my old job is building the relationships it's key even if they say no at least you've got some value and added into that relationship because that's key and the little thing it's the little things as well like how was the holiday family Christmas the children this is bringing the person because people do business with people isn't it not just like a an image and stuff I really love that building the relationship and at my job right I always used to have for my birthday right for my, because I'm Jamaican I'd always have a Jamaican food party so at lunch I'd block off the whole office and have all food and we'd have quizzes and all stuff like to build a bit of a team rapport because things were not easy in that team and I love it you said just do the things to build relationships and preparation before the performance and I love it as well because some people may take the excuse of oh I don't have anyone to speak to to practice but get your phone out everyone's got a phone or a laptop just record and you're right it is a bit cringy like oh my gosh didn't know my eyebrow moves like that you know (laughs) (laughs) but it's so it's so key to see 
how do you look? Because I know this is old phrase, you can't see what the picture's like when you're in the frame, because you need to see how do you behave when you're in these kind of stress, I'm going to say stressful, these kind of high intense situations. And then I think that's perfect, really to record yourself and see like, what is it you're doing when you're when you are doing what you're doing, definitely. That was, I love that one. Build relationships, really, really, really helpful. And then I was thinking from, um, from that advice, that kind of corporate woman, um, and, and she's got to go and speak out into this kind of situation. I was thinking, um, how would you, what would you say if like, how do we combat the fear of speaking up? in the workplace or the awkward conversations to avoid you know when you don't want to have that awkward conversation it could be that you're a manager of a couple of people and you don't want to have that conversation with the lady who may be coming in late because of childcare issues and facing the, con the consequences of it how would you advise a woman to combat that fear of having the awkward conversation at the workplace yeah I think it's such it's such a tough one isn't it because yeah fear and it's something that isn't just in that moment it's like the week before or yeah. when someone's like can I have a chat and then you feel your stomach <laughs> literally fall out of your body to the floor and you're like oh my god what are you gonna say yeah um it's so hard because your body has such a visceral response to it yeah um so I would say mindset exercises firstly, mm -hmm. like get yourself, and that goes back to the character of like, who do you want to be in that moment? So mm -hmm. training your brain to be like, you know what? I am calm, I'm collected, I'm very good at my job and I welcome criticism mm -hmm. and it's going to be fine. So that's if you're the person having that conversation at you. But if you're yeah. having the conversation with someone, I would also come back to that building personal relationships mm -hmm. um, because that just makes so, everything so much easier. So yeah. I talk a lot in my um, workshops and webinars on how to speak up. Yeah. If someone is interrupting you all the time in a meeting and it's literally, yeah, exactly. It's just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> please stop. Um, it's, if, if it's someone that you've taken a little bit of time mm -hmm. and that you've got to know them a little bit, you can be like, Fred, did you know that you interrupted me five times in that meeting? Yeah. And, and it can be, that's, and, they can, and then that gives them the space to be like, what? No, if, if you have that rapport already, mm -hmm. you have a much easier conversation. And then you can be like, yeah, okay, well, don't do it again. You can kind of make light of it while also making the point. Right? Yeah. Um, because we want to avoid the awkwardness as much as possible. And I think so many conversations that are awkward mm -hmm. don't need to be. Yeah. If, if we take the time to kind of do them in the right way, which is difficult because at work often we're stressed. Yeah. There's so many factors. Um, and it also, mm -hmm. if you're having that conversation, it's so, so much different to never having spoken to Fred before and being like, hi, oh, excuse me, sorry, uh, did you realize that you interrupted me five times in that meeting? You don't know me, I don't know you. And it's, that's a formal conversation. Yeah. You don't know them and there's no rapport there. And, yeah. and it's so much more difficult. Mm -hmm. So I would say really building those personal relationships is just so key. Mm -hmm. you know, as we said, talking to people in corridors, et cetera, et cetera. And then I would say, if you're someone that has a fear of just generally speaking up, yeah. Setting yourself small targets, small wins. Mm -hmm. Starting small, build your relationships, right? Speak to people in the corridor, instigate yeah. conversations. Yeah. And then in meetings, prepare what you want to say. Write yourself down three targets of things that you want to speak about in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Write down exactly what you want to say. So your brain isn't thinking about creating content. It's just thinking about speaking. Yeah. So starting small and really just building up your confidence like that. And then also... If you have that fear of speaking up, asking someone to advocate for you mm. um, and saying, I really struggle, would you mind? You know, I find that this person is interrupting me all the time. Could you mm. just bring the point back to me? And then on the flip side, if you're someone that doesn't find it awkward and can speak up, please advocate for other people because it's very obvious the people who are quieter and do struggle, yeah. please give them that helping hand. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Yeah, really, really helpful because... Things can sometimes be awkward or sound awkward and they don't need to be. And I think a lot of it goes back to like what you've said in the beginning, like mindset and who do you want to be in that moment in time and, and, and be open. So like, you know, okay, don't have that <clears throat> kind of response, just being welcome into criticism and stuff or improvement tips, et cetera. And the thing is, well, you said building that personal relationship, if you have that strong foundation, then whatever is said, it's not going to be so kind of spicy or hurtful, like as if a personal attack and stuff. And 
because I like the way you did the difference of like you know kind of light hearted did you realize you know Bob you interrupted me five times and then the next one was excuse me Bob did you realize you interrupted me five times there's no rapport it's like oh Exactly. Who's she? And if, yeah, and if, if you've never spoken to them before, 100% of what you've ever said to them is confrontational. Yeah. Whereas if you have a personal relationship with them already, then it's probably more like 1% and the rest yeah. is really friendly. Yeah. So it's that balance. Definitely. We really do need a balance. Um, and I liked as well, like um, building those um, uh, personal, um, personal relationships and as well setting yourself small, small targets, like writing down three things you want to say in the meeting and stuff and go through them and, and celebrate those small wins as well. Because when the big ones come, like, well, I started from here and now I'm here. I really love that. And, um, and as well, the, the advocate, if you feel the always getting talked over, particularly because some women I know are in a kind of male-dominated industry, so maybe the only woman, or one of the only one or two women in there, and so definitely having an advocate to speak up for you, then if you are the more stronger voice, you kind of be the advocate, and that's so helpful to get your communication out. Really, really key. I really love that one. Have an advocate or be the advocate, definitely. Really, really key. I love that. And I, I just always, always get thinking, just build the relationships build the relationships I always keep hearing that one definitely thank you so much for that one and then another one that kind of came to me is like I'm just looking at kind of like the work that you do and stuff like why is it important to speak up and speak out in a corporate business setting to maintain those good working relationships that we've kind of mentioned yeah so I think speaking up and speaking out is is something that is so essential but it's also mm. something that can be incredibly difficult um, you know, a huge amount of our work is often re reliant and our performance is reliant on the rest of the team and the team working as a whole. And so being able to, to speak up and build those team relationships, it's not going to happen if you're not communicating well. Yeah. Um, so really encouraging people to talk to each other and talk to each other in the right way and have that kind of really good dialogue. Yeah. And then just generally like why it's important to speak up in your business. I don't know. So there's a, there's a phenomenon called groupthink. Mm -hmm. which is, yeah, right. So which is when you have a group of people who, I mean, we see it most with groups of white males mm -hmm. because they're, I mean, patriarchy uh, and white supremacy. So um, so we see that in, in a lot of massive board directors mm -hmm. of like Fortune 500 companies. Yeah. Um, and so and it, to, to the point where Goldman Sachs have stopped offering initial public offerings. So that's when a company is going to be floated on the stock market. They've said, we will only start to instigate that if you have women on your board. Wow. Yeah. So the group think, yeah, it's when people who are exactly the same, think exactly the same and mm -hmm. don't see any of the problems that are potentially outside of mm -hmm. their own realm. Yeah. And it's so important to speak up because you could be that person that stops the next we work failure. I don't know. If, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So they tried to do their IPO and everything mm. fell apart. Their share price dropped. The value of their business was halved. Mm. And we're talking billions. Yeah. So, you know, you could can be that person that actually makes the difference and it's a terrifying in between you and making a difference there's a terrifying cr crevasse of potential failure mm -hmm. but on the other side is huge success and I think it's about having that really strength and confidence in yourself to be like you know what yeah I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna speak out and again it's about speaking out in the right way mm -hmm. it's not about shouting it's about building your relationships and speaking out and knowing yeah what I'm saying is really important so you, you need to listen mm-hmm Wow, I love that. Definitely. Um, I like it. Talking to each other in the right way is key because everyone likes to talk, but sometimes it's the way it's delivered, yeah, you know, absolutely. it's the way it's delivered. That's the thing that gets people's back up. And so key, like group think in regards to like, the business sense, like as you see, like in many kind of, you know, huge companies, there is that kind of border and scenario where everybody looks the same, everybody thinks the same, they know each other all from a particular primary school, a secondary school, all got the same kind of route. And, and the thing is, devastating stuff do happen, like with WeWork and many other companies, because there was this one person who did not speak out or could not speak out effectively because of the power of the group think thing. And, um, and, and if one person just speaks, then the others kind of look and think, okay, what's going on? That could kind of at least kind of stop or slow down potential kind of disasters like that. Definitely, I like that. Talking to each other in the right way, because 
anyone can have a difficult conversation, but it's the way how you have that difficult conversation. That's what's key, definitely. And I always remember rude people, but and then I remember even more so the people who speak to you really nicely and stuff, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. You know, like it's, you, I think we think when we think about awkward and difficult conversations, we only think about the negative things that we're going to say. Yeah. It's so important to also say the positives and make it a positive experience for everyone. We don't have to have horrible conversations. It's not something we have to do. No, definitely no. not definitely oh, yeah. not and like I, I always think I'll speak to my um my listeners and my team people that I train like always like when you've got to give like that kind of air of correction use this technique that me and my friends call like a love sandwich where you give them like a bit of encouragement tell them this is how you're really great you give them the bit of you know meat in the middle the correction the improvement they need then give them some other encouragement and I really love how you do this so they hear the love they hear the correction then it's wrapped again in like love and that's I always find that's the best way to deliver kind of hard kind of teaching or improvements to someone definitely all the time definitely I always find it just speaking the truth in love um definitely and I really love that I think people will respond to anything you say it's just the way how it's said to them perfectly perfectly exactly yeah, definitely. And then I was thinking, um, yeah, so that really helped me understand that question, particularly in the corporate setting because of that mindset that happens. And then I wanted to move on to my last question. We've kind of gone through my questions that I wrote down. <laughs> and, and then I was thinking of the last question as well, like what exciting things are happening in Clear Voice and your business and other projects that you're in, involved in that our listeners might be interested in staying in touch with you to find out more? Yes, I have a podcast. Yay. Also out every Tuesday. So you yep. can you can listen to them both back to back. Excellent. Um, so yeah, a big part of my journey was finding female role models. And, you know, because, and I, I did some market research as, as every conscientious business owner does. Yeah. <laughs> my market research. And part of that was like, who are your strong female role models? Mm-hmm. Um, and most people were like, my mum and my sister. Yeah. And I was like, okay, great. Um, I think most people would also say like Richard Branson, Elon yeah. Musk, you know, yeah. when we ask people about role models and there are never any women. Yeah. Um, and, and it's amazing that we all have inspirational mums and sisters. Mm. It does also make us beg the question, why do we not have uh, m- many women in leadership positions if we have so many inspirational women? Because if everyone's mom and everyone's sister is inspirational, yeah. well, dad or brother is. Um, so <laughs> something going on there. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, so yeah, there was a really big, just lack of female role models Mm -hmm. and and there's a there's a lack of women being um spotlighted for using their voice and when Mm -hmm. they do when they aren't really having their voice and you know i came across like mary portas and um um uh trini woodall as well Mm -hmm. and um melanie eusebe like they're amazing strong women who are really using their voices and i'm like wow i didn't know women could be like this this is so cool yeah um because I grew up in, in a massive patriarchy uh and um so yeah so so that's why I created the podcast to talk to talk to women mm-hmm. who have found their voices and be like how did you get here yeah was it always easy for you when did you feel like you first had a voice when did you not have a voice how did you find your voice mm-hmm. how are you using your voice now mm-hmm. and just you know there are so many women doing amazing things you know, like this podcast, it, it's so fascinating. And so just to be able to, to shine a light on that and, yeah. and be able to learn from each other as well. Definitely. So yeah, so that's my podcast. And then nice. I also offer free webinars when I'm developing mm-hmm. my corporate content. I always offer webinars for free. Mm-hmm. For, so that's stuff like um, how to get your voice heard in a meeting or how mm. to get your own personal rhetoric and your personal brand of speaking. So keep a lookout for those because they're few and far between, but you might be able to get on one. Nice. I love it. I really, I'm looking forward to um, today's podcast. It sounds like I'm trying to catch up with some of the good ones that I've missed as well. Definitely. I really love the focus, like women in leadership. How do they use their voice to get to where they are and how are they continuing to grow with their voice as well and how to continue to speak up without kind of being that kind of woman. Yeah, yeah definitely. I love it. And, and the, the webinars, I really hope all of our listeners take um uh, uh, take advantage of that great opportunity and stuff it sounds like really amazing stuff and um so so that they can um all of my lovely listeners can get hold of you what are your social media links i'll put them in the show notes too if you just want to say them for anyone who's jogging on the treadmill right at this moment 
Um, so yeah, if you're jogging on a treadmill, I feel you, number one, because I always use podcasts as a distraction when I'm running. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my, my Instagram is at Clear Voice Official, mm-hmm. and my website is also Clear Voice Official. And if you want to find me, it's Florence Bavanandam with loads of A's and loads of N's. It's B-A-V-A-N-A-N-D-A-N. And that's where you'll find me. Excellent. Thank you so much, Florence. It's just been such an honor and so exciting to really hear from you and learn. And I thought, I don't know what I'm going to learn at this podcast, but I've learned so much more than I even thought. Even more than that, my questions that you drafted, you've really just really shown so much about your skills and knowledge. And I really am really grateful that you came on board. And I've learned so much. I've listened and I've laughed. And it's been so great. It's been like just a chat with one of my sisters, I must say. It's been <laughs> really, really great. And thank you so much for coming. Please stay in contact. And I hope all of our listeners will follow you and listen to your podcast too it's been so great Florence thank you so much for coming down and talking to us today well thank you for having me Leanne I have enjoyed it so much great excellent thank you so much everyone for listening and we're gonna go now